In this activity, we're going to start learning about JavaScript. Now we're going to be working in the Tulsa New Year folder. So you want to download and unzip the Tulsa New Year zip file. And notice there's only one single HTML file. We'll be working in that. And the other file that we're going to be working in is a script file, a .js file. And you can find that under the scripts folder and click on there and there's nothing in here except the comment, but there's a place for you to put your name and the date. And so that's the other file that we're going to be working with. Now, JavaScript is a scripting language and is widely used on the internet for developing interactive web pages. And it is a client side language. So uh, first, let me tell you what a server side programming language is. And, and JavaScript can be either one. So there's a version of it that can be used as server side coding, but we're going to be using it as client side only. So in a server side program, what happens is a user is looking at their web page, right? And the way they retrie retrieve that web page is they put a URL in the browser and then the server sends that file, right? The browser sends a message to the server and the server returns all the files for that web page, the HTML file, any image files, any CSS files, any JavaScript files that are connected to that web page. So it returns that whole thing and the web page displays in the user's browser. Now we've already been doing that, right? And it's, those are called static pages. They just display whatever's currently in the web page. Well, now we're going to be doing interactive web pages, which means there's some programming going on. So the, the web page actually does something. Well, when that happens, if it's server-side programming, if it is, then what that means is when the user clicks on something interactive, then it sends the information to the server and the server executes the program. And then the server returns the data back to the user. And that's server-side coding. That's where the server is running the program, executing the program. Right? That's one version. The other version is client side. And that means that, again, the retrieving the web page is exactly the same. But now when the user clicks on something interactive, something that ex needs execution, that program is actually run on the user's program, on the user's computer. So it doesn't have to send off to the server again. It just runs that code directly on the user's computer. So all the execution happens locally. JavaScript is an interpreted language, which means that execution happens as it moves through the lines. It doesn't need a compiler. It doesn't have to be pre-compiled. So what happens in an interpreted language is each line is translated and executed, and then it moves on to the next line. And it's translated and executed. So we won't need a compiler. Uh, we will need a text, plain text editor and a browser. And those are tools we've already been using. So nothing new to code in JavaScript. We already have a plain text editor and a browser that we can work with. Now we want to connect them. We want to connect this JavaScript file to the HTML. And the way we do that is in the HTML file. We do that with a script tag. And the script tag has an opening and closing tag. And you can write JavaScript directly in the middle of that, in, in between the opening and closing tag, but we're not going to use that method. We're going to put it all in an external J JavaScript file. So the way you connect it then is with an SRC attribute. And then we're going to have to go, we're in this HTML file, we need to go in the scripts folder. And then we need to get that tny underscore script.js file. And that connects the two together. Now there's nothing in the JavaScript file, so nothing's happening, but this is how we connect them. There's one other attribute that we can add to this script tag. And by default, the way that it works is the HTML page loads until it gets to a script, any script, any coding or a script tag, and then it stops loading the HTML and it executes, it loads and executes the script file. So it would start loading till here and then it would get to the script file and it would say, oh, I'm gonna go load and execute that file and then I will continue to, ex to load the HTML file. So that is what it is by default and to get that you don't add anything. 
Another way that it works, you can add the async, and then what that does is, is oh, let's just load the HTML and the JavaScript files together. We'll kind of load them at the same time. And then if we get to some execution of the code, we'll pause the HTML, execute the JavaScript code, and then continue to load the HTML. So it's still a bit of a delay for the HTML, but not as much. The other one is to use defer, and the way that defer works is it says, hey, load the entire HTML, display the page, and then come back and load the JS file and execute any code that's ready to execute. And so three different ways to identify which file loads in the browser in which, in which order, what the timing is. And we're going to use defer, and that will let the entire web page load before it loads the JavaScript file. That'll give the user the ability to see that HTML file as quickly as possible and not have to wait for any JavaScript to be able to see the web page itself.